This is Port Stories, brought to you by the Ports Past and Present Project, sharing stories from five ports in Ireland and Wales, Dublin, Rosslare, Hollyhead, Fishguard and Pembroke Dock, project funded by the European Regional Development Fund through the Ireland-Wales Cooperation Programme. Before we get stuck into this episode, a quick note about the form that our podcast will take. This first episode is an introductory one based around the theme of motivation and specifically what motivates us as a project team to do what we're doing and why it's important to us. Future episodes will delve into stories from the ports, again based around specific themes. These stories will include, we hope, interviews with community members, discussions with people who work at the ports, as well as interviews with academics. We're really excited to share with you the rich patchwork of knowledge and experiences from the port towns, and we're looking forward to having you with us along the way. Hello. Welcome to the first ever Ports Past and Present Project podcast. My name is Jonathan Evershed and I am a postdoctoral research fellow on the project based at University College Cork. Uh, you're joining me so this afternoon in my kitchen on the north side of Cork City. This is a bit of an experiment, uh, our first foray as a project into the world of podcasting. So apologies in advance for any uh, disturbing background noises, dogs barking, uh, cars going past, babies crying. Uh, we hope you'll bear with us. Ports Past and Present is a, a project seeking to promote uh, tourism in five port communities on the Irish Sea Basin through creative engagement with and reinterpretation of the heritage of those five communities uh, in Dublin, Rosslare, Holyhead, Fishguard and Pembroke Dock. The project brings together uh, researchers from University College Cork, uh, Aberystwyth University, the Centre for Advanced Welsh and Celtic Studies uh, based in the University of Wales, Trinity St. David and um, Wexford County Council as well. Uh, I'm joined uh, for this first Ports Past and Present podcast by two of my UCC colleagues on the project, uh, James Smith. Hi, um, I'm James Smith and I'm a postdoctoral fellow on the project as well. And I work on uh, public humanities, digital mapping, uh, storytelling, that kind of thing. A bit of water history as well. Uh, and Aoife Dowling. Hi there, I'm Aoife Dowling. I am the project manager uh, for Course Past and Present, as Jonathan said, based in University College Cork as well, though currently in my bedroom in Cork uh, due to the current COVID restrictions. I basically work to kind of lead the project and to help the researchers to, to do their best work. Um, so that's my area of interest on the project. So uh, what we thought we'd do for this first uh, ever attempt at this podcast is try and share with you why it is that we think that these five port communities and the connections between them are so interesting, why the heritage of these places has intrigued us and drawn us to wanting to be involved in this project. We're going to try and offer some of our reflections on what it's like to work in, with and alongside communities in these places to uncover that heritage and find new and creative ways of promoting it. I'm going to ask uh, Aoife and James, um, what it was that drew them to the Ports Past and Present project and why they think it's an important and interesting one. So I'm going to ask Aoife in the first uh, instance, what is it about these places, these port communities that uh, drew you to wanting to be involved in this project? Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. I think for me, it's about the people of the communities and getting to know the character of, of life at those various port towns, including their stories and their family stories and heritage stories that have been passed down. That's the most interesting thing about the project for me, talking to those people on the phone. Unfortunately, not able to, to visit the ports at the moment, but certainly having some great conversations nonetheless. 
In terms of the project overall, for me, it was an opportunity to move from the kind of media world where I was previously working to the academic world, which I thought would be a really interesting opportunity. And as well as that, I felt a real connection with this project and the Ireland-Wales link based on my own kind of personal history of being Irish, uh, having been born in, in Wales, as it happens, and growing up there for a little while in my childhood. I really understood the links between the two countries and the similarities that are there between the kind of cultures of those towns. So that really made it kind of more interesting for me as well. Thanks, Aoife. Um, and James, I guess the same question. What is it about um, these five port communities, the Irish Sea and the Irish Sea Basin, that um, so interested you and drew you to wanting to be involved in ports past and present? I guess I'm interested in mapping and in capturing the depth of places and the idea of capturing the combined character of an entire region, the unique qualities and of communities in each of the ports that surrounds the coastlines, the coastal communities around them, and the Irish Sea Basin as a place itself um, rather than as, as just a um, a sort of uh, infrastructure, you know, a blue highway or a, just a space that people pass over. Um, and some of the ideas come from um, previous work that I've done about what's called deep mapping, which is often described as a type of sumptuous depth of place, you know, across time and across culture and space of trying to get a sense of the richness of a place by a, a, a variety of different perspectives and sources, audio, video, um, you know, stories, poetry, literature, trying to capture that um, richness uh, in digital form uh, through some of the public storytelling we've been doing, getting stories from the community and um, just trying to, once again, create a representation of the Irish Sea and its ports that is of interest to people that might want to stay and pass through, uh, get to know the place a bit better and for the people that live there as well. So like Aoife, the thing that I'm really fascinated by are people and by their stories. And in particular, how understandings of the past and of heritage help to inform our sense of self and our identity in the, in the present. I'm interested in general in questions of um, heritage and identity, and in particular in those questions uh, on the island of Ireland and in relationships and identities within and between Ireland and Great Britain. Like Aoife, I'm, I was born uh, in Wales and grew up in Wales, uh, on the west coast of Wales in Aberystwyth, uh, and much of my professional and working life has been spent in Ireland on both sides of the Irish border. And so my life has very much been shaped. My own personal story, my own identity, my own sense of self has been very much shaped by the crossings across the Irish Sea and the connections within and between these islands as they are reflected in and refracted by the Irish Sea. So there's a kind of personal story there for me as well. And then professionally, as uh, in as a political anthropologist, which is what my background is in, I've been very interested in those questions of, of identity within and between these islands. I'm really interested in the conflicted relationships between Ireland and, the, and Great Britain across time, relationships that have been shaped by colonialism, war and violence, but also by cooperation, family ties, cultural connections. And you can't help but notice that the ports on the Irish Sea are the lens through which these relations, both contested and cooperative, are kind of focused and refracted across time. It always comes back to the ports. Kind of key events uh, in Irish and British history uh, have been shaped by or kind of filtered through these ports on the Irish Sea. So I think that they are kind of centrally important places. And that has been thrown into all the sharper relief by uh, the current politics surrounding the Brexit process, which is the, uh, the pro uh, project I was working on prior to coming to the Ports Past and Present project was examining the consequences of Brexit for um, the relationships between Britain and Ireland. Um, and 
that's the kind of background that I've brought into this project, interested in examining uh, and understanding better and, and seeking to represent better the kind of long history of those relationships that are now being so thrown into relief by the Brexit process. So Aoife, you're the project manager of Ports Past and Present, and I'm interested in your opinion. What are the greatest benefits of the project's approach, which combines kind of academic research with the promotion of and, and development of tourism in, in our five port communities? I think when done well, that approach can allow benefits to both the academic researchers in the project who have various areas of expertise, but also to community members at the port towns who are vitally important to our project. So when done right, it allows for the academic researchers to learn from local stories, folklore and, and knowledge in the ports, and in turn for the community members to learn skills and ideas that they might not have known before. For example, we've been able to share our project Omeka platform with the communities and that's open source platform for, for sharing stories which they could potentially use and adopt long beyond the project. It, it's easy for people to do that. James might speak to that in a little bit more detail, but just being able to share those ideas is, is really valuable and really unique and working towards shared tourism goals. Uh, and in turn, the academic researchers um, can, you know, engage with communities. And really, I think it's important to kind of get out and about and maybe a little bit less possible during COVID, but still the spirit is there of, of reaching communities and and sort of leaving the university campus in a, in a meaningful way. Great. And uh, next up uh, is Jonathan, who is by training a political anthropologist and his specialities are sort of looking at the social and political context of uh, the island of Ireland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, but also the broader context of Brexit. And in the case of this project, that includes the links between Wales and Ireland, the Irish Sea and Brexit. So my question for you, Jonathan, is... Um, we hear a lot of negative stories um, about, you know, what's going to happen after Brexit uh, in 2021. But what kind of positive stories have you heard coming out of the port communities in the context of Brexit as, as we sort of uh, lead up to a fairly significant change uh, coming in 2021? So I think what Brexit has revealed or illuminated in new ways is the importance of relationships within and between these islands. And the ports are really a kind of microcosm or kind of prime example of um, the importance of those relationships. They're so interconnected and you can't, for instance, tell the story of Hollyhead without telling the story of Dublin Port. Um, you can't tell the story of Fishguard or Pembroke Dock without also telling the story of, of Ross Lair. And I think what I've seen is that that's really well understood and well known in these port communities that we're working in. And people right across these port communities have attested to the importance of those connections and those relationships. Um, the, there's a kind of shared experience of people that live and work and whose lives have been shaped by these ports on both sides of the Irish Sea, which people are very keen to, you know, share. And, uh, and I think that that's been really amazing to see the kind of um, scope and and potential to build on that shared set of experiences and that shared set of understandings. Uh, and it, the will to build and to develop what are already long-term historic relationships between these places is, uh, is brilliant, actually. Uh, and that comes 
you know, in spite of and and in large part because of Brexit, that there is this will to to try and overcome what new barriers there will be uh, between um, our two islands uh, and between Wales and Ireland and between our, diff our the port communities on either side of the Irish Sea after Brexit, a will to work together to develop, um, you know, to develop. Uh, a joint approach to tourism and also to kind of tell the shared story of those places and to share the heritage of those places um, which I think is is really cool and and hopefully a kind of bulwark against some of the more negative consequences of of um, of brexit and of the those new potential barriers in the Irish Sea that result from it. So James, you're leading the digital elements of the project and there's a work package specific to those. I mentioned briefly in my answer a few minutes ago, the, the Omeka platform, which is one of numerous digital elements, also including a project app. Could you tell us how do the digital tools chosen for the project help to bring the heritage of the port towns to life? Well, Essentially, the tools we're using, the Omeka platform that was mentioned and the, uh, the, the theme, the sort of the, the presentation on top of it that is a storytelling sort of device that we use on the website, it all came out of urban history, out of collections management, a desire to make physical spaces sort of into a story in the digital realm uh, to, to tell a, a combination of uh, media stories of, of a place, you know, audio, video, text, um, to link it richly to other stories. It's something that um, what's called structured data is very good at linking stories and information to other stories and information, linking media to media, linking story to place and so on. What we didn't realize when we started out is we thought this would be a great sort of element of the project of bringing the sort of depth of cultural history around the five ports and the sort of Irish Sea Basin and region to life. What we didn't realize is that because of COVID, we were going, it was going to be a sort of healthy and reciprocal relationship between digital and physical, you know, moving through and visiting space, talking to people in person. But then COVID made it a, a, a remote sort of operation essentially as it has for all European projects and definitely our partners in the Island Wales initiative. And it's been really good to be able to have that platform ready to be able to start telling those stories, to be able to start sort of getting the capacity ready to tell interesting, engaging stories. And then in the new year, we'll be uh, working on our app. Uh, it'll bring it to life um, even more when we're actually able to go back and visit the ports and to talk to people to show them what we've been doing to properly tie up physical and digital space as i would say it always should be the two should always be tied up but um having that time to tell stories online it was a sort of rewarding experience i think in the first instance so Essentially, that's the end of our podcast for today. It was our first podcast. Uh, it was an experiment. Uh, we thought it might be interesting to get into a bit of the details of the project. Uh, we'll have more projects coming up in the new year um, that will be turned into podcasts, uh, some recordings of webinars. Uh, there'll be a series of talks called uh, Coastal Connections that um, is uh, being supported by the Institute for Historical Research in London. There'll be lots of those going up, uh, all kinds of topics, including a bit more on Brexit in the new year. For now, I've been your sound engineer for this uh, this podcast. Uh, uh, Aoife Dowling and Jonathan Evershed were my uh, colleagues who you also heard from. And uh, we'll very look, much look forward to, you know, to talking to you again in the future. And um, remember to tune in again. So thank you.